Hello, my most amazing artists. How are you today? Today I'm talking with my Prima scholars and we are gonna look at a very cool piece of artwork. So as you can see, this piece of art is not a painting. It's actually a type of a sculpture. It's the type of sculpture that's called a mobile and we'll talk about that more in just a minute. But I wanna make sure you remember what a sculpture is. So take a look at this picture. Have you ever seen the Statue of Liberty? The Statue of Liberty is a sculpture located in New York Harbor, and it is made out of iron and concrete and copper. And that is a statue that has width and length and height. Sculptures are three-dimensional instead of flat. Another sculpture that I want to show you is this sculpture. This is a Native American totem pole carved out of wood. This is located in the Northwest Coast. Now that's a sculpture also that's not flat. Sculptures, remember, are wide and long and high. So let's take a look again at this special sculpture. This is a sculpture called a mobile. And a mobile is different from the other two sculptures because instead of resting on the ground, it's actually hanging from the ceiling. This is a sculpture that's made out of wire and sheet metal. And what I want you to notice is that it's perfectly balanced. The sculptor is named Alexander Calder and he made tons of different sculptures throughout his life. And some of them are like regular sculptures that rest on the ground, but a lot of them were mobiles. Alexander Calder actually decided to be an engineer before he became an artist. And so I think he was probably fascinated by some of the engineering techniques to get a sculpture to balance perfectly. Now this sculpture is kind of fun. It's named Lobster Trap and Fishtail. So let's see if we can find those parts in the sculpture. Look closely at the sculpture. Which part do you think is the lobster? Which part do you think is the lobster trap? And which part do you think is the fishtail? All right, if you think this part right here is the lobster trap, you're right. It kind of looks like a trap with all of those wire lines in it. This part up here represents the lobster. Lobsters are red, and so that represents the lobster. And down here, you'll see a whole bunch of little black triangular shapes, and those are the fishtails. Now, why do you think a mobile would be a good way to represent things that are in the sea or the ocean? You know, a mobile, whenever the wind blows, can kind of move around. It doesn't stay still. In fact, you'll notice over here some dark shapes and up here, these are shadows. And as a mobile moves around, the shadows move around too. Do you think that would look a little bit like things drifting in the water? I thought it was a great idea to do this kind of a sculpture as a mobile. Now you may have seen a mobile before. Maybe you have a little brother, a baby brother or sister or baby cousin and they have had a crib. And sometimes we put a mobile over the crib so the babies can touch or laugh or play with the things. Also, we can make mobiles ourselves out of paper. I want you to take a look at a mobile that I'm gonna have you make today. All right, let's take a look. That mobile is hanging from my ceiling and it is a bunch of paper that I have cut into different shapes. I'm gonna take you upstairs to my office and show you how to do that. Alrighty, so I'm up in my office now and you might recognize this piece of paper because you have three types of paper like that in your packet. You have one that's shaped like a triangle and one that's shaped like a circle and one that's shaped like a square. And you can add color with whatever materials you have at home uh, that you would like to use. 
I'm going to use paint on this one, and then I'm gonna show you um, on the other one, I'm gonna use marker. But of course, you can use colored pencil or any type of paints you have, or markers or crayons, any of it works great. So I am going to add some colorful designs to my circle shape. So I'm going to activate my blue and I am going to paint some of that right in the middle. Now you can do whatever kind of design you want. You don't need to do a picture on here. You don't need to draw something because when we cut it apart, you won't be able to see that anyway. We just want to add color because the color will make your mobile very fun and bright. So I'm just going to add some cool colors to this design. Maybe I will make some stripe marks here, show you some different options. And because you're going to cut it out, it doesn't matter if you go outside the lines. You'll be cutting that part anyway. All right, I'm gonna finish this up real quick. If you wanna go faster, paint is probably the fastest option. Okay, I am going to let that dry for a little bit. And while that's drying, I'm going to show you how I'm going to do one with marker. So this time I think I'll use some warm colors and that would be colors like orange and yellow and red and pink. So the thing you wanna to remember today when you're decorating your mobile is that you want to make a pattern. Now remember a pattern means that you can have repeating colors or repeating lines or repeating shapes. So I'm making some repeating pink lines here and I'll just keep going around and then I can change my color when I'm ready. Okay, now I'm done coloring. So the next thing I'm going to do is cut out my design. So the first thing you wanna do is cut the shape out and throw away the background paper. So on the square, you just cut around the outside edge where the line is solid and square shaped. You can throw that away. Then you'll notice that there's this dotted line. That's the line that you wanna cut on to make it into a mobile that can hang from a hanger. Now be careful and make sure you don't cut all the way off to the edge or you'll have to tape your mobile back together. This is all going to be connected if you stay on the dotted line. Okay, so when you're all done, it'll hang from a hanger, just like what I showed you before. All right, this is the mobile that I already made, and I attached it to a hanger, just with some tape, and I hung the paper all the way down to the bottom.